Let's do it. Likes, camera, action, cut to it. Hey, week 14. Wrap up. How are you doing, Coley? Good morning. Salutations. I'm doing just splendid. How are you on this fine Tuesday, Wednesday for the people watching? Uh, how are you? Excellent. Excellent. Um, so you're getting into the holiday spirit a little bit. Yeah, getting into the holiday spirit. Had a little uh, family competition. Had a gingerbread, team gingerbread uh, competition. So, um, but it was fun. It was fun. Uh, do you have any Christmas traditions? So yeah, since me and my wife got together, we go to the same Christmas tree farm every year, cut down our own tree. Oh, you cut uh, it down? Mm-hmm. Yourself? Mm -hmm. That's pretty dope. I get down, I get down there with the saw, get to hacking. Axe would be more fun, but it also just wouldn't work at all. Uh, Santa's there, which is always big. I was thinking about this. When you're a kid, I don't know if there's a bigger celebrity you could meet than Santa. That's true. I think he's 1-1. One, one. Like, uh, my, my daughter's like, they're very outgoing, vivacious little girls. They see Santa, they're like, it's like Michael Jackson walked into the room. They can't believe it. All right, let's move you on. Let's move. Got a little moonwalk back from the line. <laughs> that was Kadarius Tony. He was going. Yes. Last <laughs> yes. Everybody's talking about it. You kidding? Like Kadarius Tony is being talked about in the last couple of days, as if, kind of like in Carolina, like all the stories are coming out. He didn't do this. Hasn't done that. Uh, there's video of. Uh, Von Miller was off sides uh, the <laughs> play right after. Why did... It is terrible what happened to, to Kadarius Tony. I was thinking about it the whole time. When I, I've been that guy when you make the mistake and the camera just you, looks at you for the reaction <laughs> right. based off you, you not helping the team win or in this case, helping the other team right. solidify this win and keep their hopes alive. How standard is it? Because I know we've talked about it before. I always thought it was kind of just routine since like Pop Warner. You go out there, you point to the ref. I didn't even know there was a conversation that happened. I thought it was just kind of like, am I good? Yeah, of course I am. Let's get on with the play. How important is it to not only point to the ref, but to get that confirmation like, yeah, no, you're good. It is extremely important. And I will put it on the same category of this. You know, when you see field goals or the extra lineman comes in who's put in a position as eligible, he has to report. There have been times where guys who have reported, and you can see them on camera reporting, and the referee does not acknowledge them, which means mm -hmm. because the referee is, is managing 10 other things. Sure. And so sometimes that happens. The Kadarius Tony instance, you hear Andy Reid said he didn't. Andy Reid confirms Kadarius Tony never checked with the referee on the sideline. I've had referees tell me, not with Jordan, but other guys, and sometimes Jordan, hey, oh, I've heard, ear hustle, hey, you need to move up. You're a little bit, you're, you're too far back. So there's dialogue with the referees. They will tell you. You point to the referee because you're acknowledged to the referee. Am I good? And a referee may say, hey, back up. Now, I also heard reports yesterday that he was he had lined up like that four times. <laughs> so that means the referee threw the flag as a result of I didn't told you to line up correctly. Right. So you're not going to listen to me. And that's what happened. Or the referee probably didn't. I don't know exactly the dialogue. But I can tell you, if he's lined up four times, they had to because of, I'm not going to keep telling you. Right. Back, you know, up. <laughs> that was a lot of people saying that doesn't really affect the play at all. Like, if it hadn't been called, you, Bills fans you, wouldn't have posted it like, oh, see, he was offsides. Yes, that is true. However, no game is won or lost after over one play. Correct. It's a cumulative plays. 
I like Kadarius. I also believe he ha- he can be special. Didn't work out with him with the Giants. It's currently not working out with him for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a Super Bowl champ. Give that man his flowers because he deserves it. But the way this offense, Andy Reid is on the time clock. Patrick Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You can see he's getting frustrated. Something ha- has to give, and I believe they will keep Sky Moore, keep working with him. I'm, it's Rice, Rasheed Rice, bang. There's two guys I, I believe, based off their body of work this year, you got to move away from them. MVS and Kadarius Tony. It is starting to, started, it's cost them games the inability to make plays for their team. The receivers have cost them four wins this year on final drives of games, either with offensive pass interference penalties or drops, like you saw. Uh, the penalty this game drops from MVS in the past. That's four wins. We're, we're talking about a team that's never played a road playoff game outside of the Super Bowl. It does. And, no, I, I, here's the thing: if they were, if they had receivers that can show up on a consistent basis, the guys who, right, Kadarius and MVS. They run routes. You can see it. I mean, they're running. They're running good routes. Great mm-hmm. routes. No, they're running good routes. Good enough with the quarterback that they have to get them the ball. He gets them the ball quick out for a first down drop from JB via ESPN. Chiefs wide receivers have dropped 8% of Mahomes intended passes. The highest drop drop rate by a wide receiver group. The last decade, not this year, not the last couple seasons, 10 year sample size. You haven't seen drops like these chiefs receivers. You talked about Mahomes' frustrations and Andy Reid's frustrations. Is that them being good teammates yelling at the refs instead of throwing Tony under the bus? Yeah, it's good teammates to throw him under the bus because there is a football part element that that fans don't realize that go that go on behind the scenes, right? Which is the referee telling me or checking with the referee giving me warnings. Referees give warnings. You can if you listen to games, you can hear the referee tell me, "Hey, keep your hands down. Hey, watch this." There's conversations way before the game that happen, right? There's conversations. Hey, this guy. Uh, has this tendency of doing this. That guy has that tendency of doing that. That guy is uh, off the line of scrimmage. He needs to, there's a lot of analytical things that referees also study. This guy grabs more. This guy jumps the snap. This guy does this. That guy does that. Everybody's looking for an advantage. Every single body. And I'm pretty sure if that's the fourth time, what I really need is a, a pan of the sideline to tell me which, re- which coach was telling the referee, hey, man, that guy's offsides. That guy's offside. He's lined up offside. Are you going to call this today or are you going to wait till tomorrow? Are you going to cost us a win because you haven't called? That's the stuff that happens on the sideline. We were talking about lining up uh, over text, and and JB sent a picture of you. You said, yes, this is me checking with the ref because of the way you had your foot. So what was your routine? What was your habit? If I caught the ball or not, hand clap. And the hand clap was, after I do the hand clap, I'm reset next on to the next play. So then I put my head down, and as the play is going, they, tell, they play me eye right. All right, I write is to the right. I'm opposite of calling X. I write. Now, if I'm playing F or you know Z or Y, I write would mean if I'm uh, Y or F, I'm going to the call. So I'll do that. And then we come out, ready, break, cool. And I'll recite it. And I'm going, okay, what's it? You know. And then I'll look at the coverage. Now, after I did that, I'm looking at the referee, and I put my, I will put my outside foot up. And I'm hitting the referee. Ball's inside. I'm hitting the refer, uh, hitting the referee. You know, hey, let's go. And then bang, I run my route. And the referee tell me, you good? And there's times where I realize when I'm lining up because also I'm looking. I have to look at the ball. Sure. So I'm looking at the ball and I'm like, oh, 
There's, bro, there have been times where I realized, I was like, goodness gracious, what was I thinking? <laughs> and I've been, like, the ball's in here. I've been way up there. And I'm like, man, I was, I was messed up. One time, I also almost tore my knee coming out the huddle, trying to line up, just tripped on some grass. I'm just, oh, gosh, I was like, oh, goodness. Painted the lines too high? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just didn't pick my feet up. Yeah, and it's it's a tough year if you're the receiver in that position, because this draft class projects to be very deep with receivers. And oh. you, you would assume the Chiefs will be in the market. Well, the, 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 you know what I tell you, know what also is going to be deep is this free agent. True. This free agency also market true. with wide receivers, because there's a lot of wide receivers who were drafted in the second and third round who have been on teams who have not been productive that they're going to let walk a ton of guys. And you know what they say, man, everybody wants you when you're in a committed relationship. But the Chiefs are, are scuffling along. So are the team that they played in the Super Bowl last year, those Philadelphia Eagles. Now they've had about a six game stretch where they've played just the best teams in the league week after week after week. And it's caught up to them. They've dropped these last two. Uh, I know you've talked about the, the offensive coordinator uh, and everything. Is is this just a team that's tired? You play a long season last year. We're getting to the middle of the December now. Are they can they can they turn this around? Make a deep run? Are they tired? Yeah, they tired. Did they just got their butt whooped two, <laughs> two weeks in a row? You, yeah, they tired. Philly's defensive line is known for getting after the quarterback. What I thought was excellent by the Dallas Cowboys is constantly misdirection take Dak took what the defense was giving him he didn't try to risk everything on every throw he was going through his progressions and then they threw cd lamb <clears throat> gallup turban you name it even tony pollard will have some explosive plays that we haven't seen out of him for a while and he's getting his legs back under him this defense isn't as strong as it used to be in the secondary. They've lost a lot. The leading tacklers in the secondary, none of those guys are on the team anymore. Big play Slay is not known for being a tackler. James Bradbury is not known for being a tackler. They will. They're committed. That's not, that's not what they major in. I'm just looking at this game, and they look they look a little different because the play callers are different. Their philosophies are different. And it's impacting this team. If you can slow down this rush, you can beat this team. That's the Dallas Cow- uh, I mean the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Dallas Cowboys stayed in their bag of trickeration. They stayed running the football. They let they did not leave points out on the on the field. They took every advantage. 52 yard, 60. You if they had an opportunity to score a point, guess what? They were scoring a point. I was gonna say Mike McCarthy's gotten a lot of crap, uh, especially for how his Packers tenure ended, uh, for how his Cowboys tenure began. If it weren't for what's been going on in Houston this year, I think he'd have a very strong case for coach of the year. He's done an incredible job. He took back over the offensive play calling. They moved on from Kellen Moore. Dak's right there in this MVP conversation. May win the darn thing. Uh, And I think Mike McCarthy deserves not all of the credit, obviously. Dak has to go out there and make the throws. Uh, But McCarthy deserves a ton of credit for how he's run this offense this year, especially, like you just said, without 100% Pollard. They've kind of had to have uh, piecemealed together the run game while Pollard's recovered from that that leg injury. Kellen Moore didn't made the Los Angeles Chargers look like last year's Dallas Cowboys, where you just, if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out, right? That's pro- that's that's the reason I don't have hair. It's Kellen Moore's fault. That's who it is. <laughs> Gotta be, it can't be, a, it can't be my dad's uh, DNA or, you know, any of that her- hereditary <laughs> <laughs> traits. Nope, it's Kellen Moore's no, fault. So watching Kellen Moore, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Blame on him. <laughs> And we talked about Kellen Moore a little bit as a, as a uh, face to point the blame at. Let's get into this Quentin Johnson breakdown. He 
too handsome. You have to have some leverage of competency. The sad part is I have no swag, dog. <laughs> Now, some of y'all were telling me that I had no idea what I was talking about. I'm a hater. Yes, Quentin Johnson, Quentin Johnston in college was inconsistent. Overall, I think he'll be okay. But he's going to he's, he's gonna have to learn something. I like him. And then also go, I need a little bit more. I got some f- film to to kind of tell you about. So before we start, contested targets. You now remember back on my breakdown, I said he's a guy that they say freakish. He's freakish. 17 contested targets. You know how many he's come down with? Five. Yards after the catch. That yak! 4.2. 123 yards. Maybe I'm just a hater. Maybe I just, you know, I'm just jealous. I just let the film create my opinion. And you know the thing that I hate being? Do you know what that is, Coley? Right. Yup. I hate being right. Because it just does something to me when I'm right. Like it just... (laughs) That's the air... <laughs> and let's get into it right now. But what will we always will do? We we'll always end on a positive note, showing the young man making a play. So I, I just want to make sure people always know that. All right, here we go. Like this play right here, going against the Las Vegas Raiders. Goes in there, gives a little stutter. I like the little stutter. Ah. ah. Goes in there. Hey, we all know Justin Herbert's going to try to put a needle through a haystack. That's just how he does it, right? What I really like about the next play is good heads up and field awareness. He's all right here, down here in the slot, right? So, again, against their what they call their flooding the zone. Flooding the zone. Look at Herbert. He's getting, pre- he's getting pressure uh, like he's been all year. Then he... Then he does a Houdini. Look at Quinn Johnson get open. Catches the ball. Ball is underthrown because he goes up. You see, he's going towards yeah. like, hey, I'm open. Justin sees him. Great catch. All right. Good field awareness. Now here's where I want you, I just I'm gonna point this out because I want you guys to see something. See something, say something. I want to see if you can see it, Coley. So okay. one, he's going to, he's going against Stephon Gilmore. Heads up, people! Stephon Gilmore is shutting people down, especially if so, you call him old. He doesn't like that. Listen, you call an old person old, <laughs> you're, gonna catch, you're gonna catch these hands. So watch this route that Quentin Johnson does. Say right here, what is Quentin Johnson doing? Where's his he's, head? It's, he's digging. He's trying to run as fast as he possibly can. He put his head okay. straight down. All right, I just want to show you that detail so people aren't saying I'm a hater and nitpicking. Hey, Steve, let him live. Won't you do something else? Hey, people, <laughs> this is my job. Sorry. So watch this. Watch this. Now, we talked about this with uh, John Domingo, young guy. Mm-hmm. Now, all this head gyration ain't tricking an old head. Ain't nobody fooling for that. So look, the black pebbles coming from the synthetic turf. You remember we talked about this. I'm telling you, they all do it out of college. Let me make you think that I'm exerting a lot more energy because that's going to make you get out of your break faster. No, it ain't. So he scooping up black yeah. pebbles. That's crazy. Look at him. Remember John Domingo, I said something about the same thing? Mm-hmm. The wasted movement. We call that running around the house. You know, I used to run around the house playing a high go seek or somebody chasing you, freeze tag or tag. Mm-hmm. And you run around the house and you hit that. Sometimes you got to be careful running around the house because you, you will underestimate the measurements of that corner of the house and your shoulder. 
You're just not going to beat a veteran with some head movement. Pause. <laughs> Pressed up. Man-to-man coverage. What play is this? Four. Stumbles, but does a good job of relocating to getting himself back up. Why does he stumble? He stumbles because he's getting outside the framework of his body. All that head fake, ain't nobody moving. Right? Again, what does he do? Where's his head? Yes, he's stumbling, but he's also back shoulder throw. Good job. Catches it, finishes it. Good job. I like that. Now this, I like this. Pretty good route, pretty good finish. The only part that is, is a little bit, and we saw this in college, where I said, mm, his athleticism, I don't really see it sometimes. And we talk about Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony will catch this ball. He's gonna be d- tap dancing more than Usher, Chris, uh, Chris <laughs> Brown, and Michael Jackson. Watch. So he got two guys here. You got two way go. He tries to juke. And here's the thing: whenever Quentin Johnston gets outside of his framework of his shoulders, right. you know what he does? He stumbles. Watch this. Outside his shoulder work. Watch it. Look what he does. Stumbles, gets up, goes. I like that play. I like it a lot. Play good. Now, I got to tell on him. Watch what he does on this play. Now, I'm telling you right now, every time Quentin Johnson puts his head down, that's a tail. That's called a tendency. That gives you a tee off to the corner and watch this corner. Watch what he does. Oh, Steve, this is film manipulation. Nope. He only got 29 (laughs) plays. This is all I got to work with people. I am sorry. Watch this. Watch when he goes. Look what he does. Mm -hmm. You know what he's running? Go route. Nope. No. A stop. Every time he runs a stop, he puts his head down to make you think he's digging. What what does he run? Oh, do tell, 8-9, do tell. He runs a stop. This time he fights through it. But because he has a tail, look at the corner shadowing and doesn't really have to run speed up. And this one I could just tell you right now. He needs to he needs to pick his feet up, bro. What I tell you, when he gets outside the framework of his body, what is he gonna do? He's gonna stumble. Stumble. I feel like working on your balance is one of the harder like it almost feels like a thing you either have or you don't. Uh, I'm not gonna comment on that. Well no, I, I was legitimately asking, like, is there a drill, is there a skill, is there something you can do to to work on your balance? Because those are natural yeah. movements, yes. you know what I mean? His they're, natural, they're, like, if to move it to basketball, Chris Paul, Allen Iverson, there was nothing they did growing up to learn they, that crossover. They, for Yes, they did. It's called practice. And two, well, I understand it's, it's practice, but it's it's inherent. There's, there's certain ways you're going to go no, about for, going into a combination. It is inherent, but you also got to, you got so, you're doing stuff that when you get outside of your framework, it doesn't matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how talented. It doesn't matter how tall, how, how short. When you get outside the framework of your body, you know what? You know why you stumble? Your ankle says, hey, that, that doesn't, we can't do that. Right, your yeah. ACL, PCL, MCL, LCL. Your weight's not They centered. say, thank you. It doesn't matter how talented you are. At the end of the day, it's, it's about it's about everything you do. Is it wasted movement? Is it is it too much? Is it too little? The outcome tells me. And I just watch, when I'm watching his play and I'm watching his body mechanics, his body mechanics and his body of work does not scream what everybody was screaming about him coming out. Sure. He's a freak. He's not a freak. And it ain't at night, Playboy. He is a I believe overall he'll be he'll be fine. What he will not be is what I heard some people say, Megatron 2.0. <laughs> sure, right. Mm, I don't know about that. He can prove me wrong, but 
thus far right now, I'm not going to sit here and say he's he's a bona fide Hall of Famer. I'm also not going to say he's a bum. He ain't a bum. He can play ball. What you're experiencing is, like someone said on there, is, man, I watched him in training camp. Well, guess what? If training camp statistics moved over into the regular season, we all, we all be <laughs> lotto winners. He just needs to work on a few things. And the, the, they need to figure out which routes he can't run. Because right now, sure. he can't run a, a stop. That is not, it, it is not well for him. I was going to say, him putting his head down, that seems like an easy fix, like in terms of getting that coach out of you. Hey, his sw- natural. Swing, swinging at a fastball, that's an easy. Stop swinging at the, the sliders. Everything's an easy fix from the comfort of the chair. I'm saying easy I, relative to other things, like him trying to learn how to juke differently. Planting his foot right now naturally, because he he's a, a larger human, his leg wants to extend farther so he can plant and shift. But like you keep pointing out, it's causing him to stumble. I don't know how much easier it is to fix, hey, do a little short leg as opposed to going all the way outside your frame. Yes, yeah, it's, it's called off season. He's going to have to I fix get that. it in a- yeah, no, no, he's going to have to fix it in the off season, But just what you said, it, it's cute. You know, it's, oh, he's he's longer than the average. Bro, you, you're just going to have to shorten up. You're going to have to do it in a more compact way. You, just because he's 6'4", and someone else is, you, let's use myself, for example, 5'9". Mm-hmm. 5'9 could get outside of his body frame and fall too. It doesn't matter how what's your how tall you are, how long you are. It it has to do with putting yourself in the best position. And he's not putting himself in the best position. He's getting outside of his framework. Height and, yep. and leg length don't aren't always the same either. Somebody some people have longer torso stride. some people have short yeah, yeah stride that's what i mean stride. yeah 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 stride so right here false step going nobody's moving back shoulder great catch had to throw back shoulder because he wasn't winning now this play right here in the slot another false step he's going against sauce i like this play but he gets out of it a little bit too early. Needs to have a little bit of patience. Sets sauce up pretty good. See that step right there? That makes me worried. This little step outside his framework. Because that allows sauce to get his hands on him. Runs the quick out. Beats him on a quick out. He needs to take another step. If he takes another step, he could get sauce to keep going. But Sauce is technically behind him when he runs the pivot route. So Sauce is a step behind him. Then he breaks down. Now Sauce is right there with him. Right. Comes back down. Throws it. For a guy that's... Now listen, both of these boys are light in the caboose. But I'm going to just tell you right now. Sauce, he flies after Sauce hits him. Like sauces out there, Jalen Ramsey, and you know he went <laughs> ham on him. I was, like Rodney I was, Harrison, yeah, yeah. Like was, <laughs> this right here, this route right here, it's a uh, in breaking route. It's a high corner. They got a high low. They got the underneath Ke- Keenan Allen going across the middle, high low. Uh, Austin Eckler down low in the flat. They're going corner, flat. And allowing the allowing the over to get over there, but Jets have a great scheme on. Takes the underneath route. I think that's Everett. No, that's not Everett. Everett's right that down there. That's somebody. It might be Josh Palmer. I think Josh Palmer's right here. It's somebody. This route. This route's not gonna win against Guyton. Everybody. I think it's Guyton. Yeah, it don't matter. Dude ain't getting the ball. <laughs> that's it's just not gonna. It's not gonna win. This is a comeback slash stop. But watch his feet. Okay? Gets out there. He raises up. See how he's rising up? Yeah. Gets down. He takes four and a half steps. And look what the corner does. 
corner takes gather, gather, puts his foot in the ground, false step by the corner one time, but corner's false step is right there at the tip of the 40. Watch his next, his uh, right leg is false step, left leg is gathering. Watch. this. The corner's pot is a little bit smaller, right? His pots are down low. Watch how fast. Look at his next step. Even. No longer even. He's pursuing the ball faster. Yeah, he beat him to the spot. Beat him to the spot. One foot. He only gets one foot in. But just let's run it through again. Head down. Boom. I already know what you're running. You're running something that tells me you're breaking down. That's what you're running. You're not running a go. You're running something that means you're going to break down. You're not running a post. Bang. Do, 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 do. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's watch the DB. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But his eighth step puts him in front. Right. Now he's, just from this sample size, obviously, it's not every play he's ever run, but no. he seems to have success catching the ball on back shoulders where the ball's forcing him to stop as opposed to the route forcing him to stop. Because then the corner can't. Adjust. He's not, he's not tipping off his route. That's right. the problem. Right. He's, he's just tipping off his route. He's inconsistent. I believe that he could have a nine-year career. Now, this play is the reason why teams had him ranked as high as they did. Catches the ball, bang. This is what you, what you want to see out of him. Look at that. Catching the ball, he's not thinking, just goes. That's the football player we want. Okay. Here we go. I love the way he attacks the ball. See, he's running, he's he's running a different route. And so somebody obviously told him, hey, showing the tendency. And then this is the last play right here. I like this play the most. Because it's hand-to-hand combat, close quarters. He shows the ability that he can do some things. He shows the promise. Look at this route. Gets up in him. Says, hey, I'm going to do something. Got to play action. Bang. Like that. What do I see out of Quentin Johnson? I see. I can see Quentin Johnson. I think he'll have a. I think he'll have an okay career. I think he'll have, you know, play nine or ten years. I think, you know, two or three years he'll have. 11, 1,200 yards, and I think he'll just be, you know, he'll probably have eight, 900 yards uh, every year um, and just be, he, he'll just he'll make your team better. But to uh, some of the people jump, they jump to this conclusion because of how he plays or how he looks that all of a sudden he's going to be a, oh, he's, he'll be tough to cover. I gave you my assessment when I was watching Phil. He doesn't win the hand-to-hand combat the way you would expect a guy to win. He doesn't seek his hips. He doesn't attack the ball the way you want a guy to attack the ball. And I say attack the ball in regards to a dog. Not the dog that you believe. I'm talking about the dogs of Devontae Adams. Dog. Tyreek Hill. Dog. What kind of routes are you seeing him win on that the, the out Chargers out, out, out get them out routes? Don't have them let them break down. A lot of the young guys when they break down, they're telegraphing their routes. They're giving uh, insight to the DB because it's not fluid, it's not smooth. I would say give him a post. Don't give him a don't give him a route. That, that, that's not that's not where he is right now. The problem is, is the offense coordinator is about uh, smart as this piece of paper. So that's just part of his system. So that's what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, that. Well, the assumption is there will be an entirely new coaching staff in there next season. And it's not wise to assume anything with the Chargers. People assume they're going to be good every year. That never comes to fruition. Um, 
what is the number one thing you think he should work on this offseason? Feet. To his feet. feet. Work on his feet. In and out of his break. And I think put a weight vest on him, too. Not his feet where you go out there and do all these great footwork stuff. I'm talking about his feet in regards of running more fluidly, learning his own mechanics. So him walking his routes, slow jogging, and then eventually full speed. But he has to, sh- the way he runs his routes is right here, outside his framework. I need him to get here. So that one play towards the end, uh, the one where he said the corner beat him to the spot, not only did he put his head down, but when he was about to go into his break, he stood straight up. Is that size related? Because when I see smaller receivers, they stay down, and when they go into their breakdown, they're already down. Like he was sprinting, came that's, up, that's and then went te- back down. That's called technique. That's that's technically sound. Okay. Some people, you know, obviously the people who want to doubt me or doesn't like what I said is, oh, you know, you don't know what it's like for tall people to, you're right, I don't. I just know how to catch passes, doggy. So you're right. I, I don't know what it's like for tall people. I just know what it's like to catch passes and to beat the corner. Yeah, he's not the first tall receiver either, but he's young. Say it ain't so, so bro. <laughs> yeah, really? no, not. Oh, my gosh. How dare, how dare you say? <laughs> right. After all offseason, now you've heard 89 breakdown QJ about three-fourths of the way through his rookie season. The Chargers got another game coming up this week. They've got Easton Stick under center. Are you going to smash that higher on Quentin Johnson over in the Underdog Fantasy app? I'm not here to give legal advice. I know I'm going to be smashing that lower. You should head over there right now. Punch and go WR1. That's wide receiver one. Go sign up with Underdog. We're going to get you a free boost, and we're going to do a deposit match bonus up to $100. So what are you waiting for? You heard the expert himself. Go on over, download the Underdog Fantasy app, enter code WR1 at sign up, get that deposit match bonus and your free special booster just for rocking with us. You're welcome. Like DK, DK is a guy who over the two years of this show, last year we talked uh more critically about his route running this year you've gone out of your way to say yeah he has added these things i didn't go out of my way i just let the film tell me i didn't go out of my way sure no was, for it sure was actually, it was actually right here was that the finger tips <laughs> i just lo- i play horrible and taboo today i should probably should uh th- this weekend uh over some friend's house i was horrible at uh was it taboo or catchphrase catchphrase whatever it was i was horrible and the thing was uh touch screen and i said should have used my finger I was just thinking about it. Sorry. (laughs) Ooh, squirrel. (laughs) So there are a lot of Chargers fans down on QJ right now, especially with how the receivers after him have looked so far in their rookie seasons. You think there's still plenty of reason for optimism? Oh, definitely have the optimism. He's going to have to get in there, get get his feet right, uh, look at his own look at his own tendencies of what he's tipping off, uh, how and why. And I think uh, overall he'll be fine. You get a new coordinator uh, who can look at him and see what he should do, what he shouldn't do, how he could catch the ball. Uh, I think he'll be fine. I think overall he, he'll, he'll do fine. I think the the looking at what a person can do is super underrated. We're about to hit draft season. We're about to hear, not from us, but from the entire space, this guy can't do this, he can't do this. What can he do? Why don't you just focus on that? Work to a player's strengths. Just spilled coffee all over the place. Just play to someone's strengths. And then if he can add stuff as he goes, great. But if you're not going to play to a guy's strengths, then you're just burning a draft pick. Hmm. That let that that goes right into the Panthers right there, right? Is buddy watching my (laughs) watching my Carolina Panthers this weekend. Uh, gave me a crick in the neck. I, I I was tossing and turning all net all night. I got a crick on my neck. I've been struggling, bro. Man, Carolina Panthers on the struggle bus. And uh, the good part I think is they have uh, some money for free agency. They don't have mm-hmm. draft uh, equity. Uh, they can get you know getting some offense alignment, um, solidifying the guards and tackles. Uh, the guards, I think moving over Icky to the guard would be the way to go. Okay. Um, moving on uh, from 
the center. I think Bozeman doesn't latch on and finish well enough. Uh, but how how are the Carolina Panthers looking uh, without Frank Wright? I was watching a, the Ravens and Rams game. Mm-hmm. And there were some things in the Ravens and Rams game that I watched that reminded me of the Carolina Panthers in regards to the wide receiver inserting himself in a run game, motioning, a lot of in-breaking routes. Now, I talked about the Q. In-breaking routes is not his forte. Who else is not his forte is who else? John Bingo. Domingo, as of mm-hmm. right now. However, what do they constantly have him running? In-breaking, in-breaking routes. routes. So you're saying what you just said is, I think it's so powerful. People don't even know sometimes their own weaknesses. And so this is what I tell a lot of young guys that who ask me, right? And people, uh, people have said, ain't nobody asking me of your opinion. Disagree. There's several. <laughs> there's a lot of receivers that. I talk to, I tell every receiver this that asks me of my opinion about their game or we have a dialogue about their game. Or when they ask me, hey, OG, what you got for me? How can I get better? What did you do? Here's what I did. I know my deficiencies. I know what my opponent knows about me. There's a scouting report about you out there, and the opposite team knows it. You need to get that scouting report from your own team to figure out what your tendencies are. Study it and work on it. Because if your opponent knows what your tendencies are and you don't know your own deficiencies, you're handicapping yourself. Know what your opponent knows about you. You want to get better? Read your... Read your own scouting report. That's what I did. Talk to DBs. Hey, what am I? T- what What are my tells? What am I? What am I? What am I giving up on my route that lets you know that I'm about to do this or that? What was an early tell for you that you had to work out? I still never fi- figured it out, man. I couldn't run a slow go to save my life. I ran that thing like I was a cat burglar, cat burglar, <laughs> or a kid stealing a cookie out of a cookie jar that spilled that. Knocked over the glass jar. <laughs> I, I would hes- I would just hesitate. Actually, this offseason, I'm going to do my own scouting report. And there's some routes on there I probably know for a fact. i like, that was a horrible route. I don't even know how I got open on that. <laughs> so you talk about the, the Panthers with, with money for free agency. Their draft equity is not terrible. They still have their two, which is the first pick of the second round, which will probably be a good player available. Uh, if you were a free agent, what outside of the money, what would entice you to go to Carolina? I want to see what other guys are getting. You know their offensive line needs retooling. Uh, you know they need a pass-catching tight end. I think Ian Thomas is doing great, but he does not frighten the defense when he's out there. Uh, Hayden Hurst is uh, not available right now. He has, I think he said he has insomnia. I was uh, praying for him. Hope he gets back better and right. Let's look at this AFC wild card race that's heating up. You got six teams tied at seven and six. Fifth seed, the Browns. The Browns have the Bears, Texans, Jets, and Bengals. Jake Browning, mm, mm, mm. Talking about, <laughs> talking about making a run for your money. The Jets, too, look surprisingly well. I could, I'll i tell you when we get to week 15 on why I believe they played so well. And the Steelers. Pathetic. Yeah, the Steel- Go ahead. Pathetic. How, uh, how could you, Tomlin? I'm talking to you directly. How could you? How could you go out there and lose that game? How could you go out there and Bailey Zappi styling on you for the entire first half? Hey, Made me up, sick. Bro. Made me stick to my stomach. Because y'all messed up your draft pick? No, we're in the same exact spot. But oh. <laughs> I know I thought the Panthers could potentially win one, maybe two more games. They, they, we already have too many wins. We're not going to get that one pick anymore. All right. So the Steelers, the Steelers have the Bengals, Colts, Seahawks, 
and they end on January 7 with the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-mm-mm. Yikes. <laughs> That's a yikes for sure. That's tough sledding. That's and tough. here's why it's th- you know why it's tough sledding because they got Mitch Trubisky out there. Uh, it's not helping. That's for sure. It does not help. And TJ Watt. I mean, he got hurt the very first play of that game. He stayed in the game, but he was not himself that whole Who? game. TJ Watt on Thursday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Offense still. Is- Pedestrian. No, no, I mean, the offense was pedestrian with Pickett under center, but if if this team is a defense-forward team, and if T.J. Yeah, Watt, yeah. one of the elite premier defenders in the entire yeah. sport, if he's not going to be himself, we already know their linebacker core has been ravaged by injury as well. Yep. So if Watt's going to get down too, I, I don't know how they're going to pull this I'm out. Sh- I am struggling with Mr. Biscuit. I just don't think Mr. <sighs> – I was watching a game from the press box, and he was taking off running, and I said, oh, Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. All right, then a nice seat. So the Texans, I think the Texans, unless CJ is better, I think the Texans are going to lose to the, I don't necessarily think they're going to lose to the Jets. I, I, I think it's going to be an interesting game. But the nice seat has a chance because they've been just playing well, which is the Broncos. They, they play have. the Lions, Pats, uh, who else? Chargers. Justin Herbert's gone. Eason sticks. I know I'm supposed to know about him. I have no idea who that young man is, and I will watch more film to get an understanding. But I don't know who he is. I don't know what school he went to. I'm pretty sure it was a a Pac-12 school. I I don't give a Fandango if he went to a Pac-12 school. He ain't ain't, whatever Pac-12 school he went to. I was way off. It was North Dakota State. I was, was completely yeah, okay. wrong. I thought it was Oregon State yeah, yeah, or Washington yeah. State. Hey, you know, anytime North Dakota State is on, I'm like, got to stop and watch this one. <laughs> whoa, whoa, is that North Dakota State? Run that back! Yeah, prime time, yeah. That's... That, look, that's how I'm doing it too. Run that back, run that back. Damn. So I, I know also, I, I'm just trying to be, I, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it Thousand. one thou wow. I'm mm-hmm. going to keep it one thou wow. I'm not even going to keep it a hundred. I'm going to keep it one thou wow. I am working the Thursday night game as Las Vegas Raiders against the Los Angeles Chargers. I can tell you right now, other than the high profile name, Easton Sticks is not a guy that I'm like <laughs> thumbing through my notebook of information to go, which way did it go? I, I, I'm not Carmen San Diego. I'm not Walter. I ain't finding them and I ain't looking for them. Okay. Oh, Bengals, they got, a ch- they got a shot. They got a shot. They got a shot. It's going to be it's gonna be out of the Browns, though. How the Browns, how the, look at Joe Flacco off the couch. Now, I've seen a couple former players uh, say it's a bad look for football that Joe Flacco can just get no, off the not. couch and still be one of, like, the 17 best quarterbacks in football. It's not. Here's the thing. Joe Flacco knows this offense because he, when he was in Baltimore, Gary Kubiak and Kevin Stefanski was where before he got the job? Baltimore. No, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Stefanski. He was in Minnesota. And who yeah. was the consultant for a little bit and then became the offensive coordinator? Kubiak. Yes, sir. Joe knows this offense. Yeah, That's I right. mean, Browns fans are all in on Flacco. Uh, he just knows how to win ball games. He's done this before. Yeah, he has. Yes, he has. And then All the 11th right. seed Bills, 7-6. and six. I mean, they would have been dead in the water if if Tony lined up onside. They're not. Well, that's the thing. I've seen some people say they won this game. Things are looking better. Are they? Like, they, they did not win this game in convincing fashion. Look, they, look. Cutting, cutting to week 15. Let's do it. They got the Cowboys at the Bills. Yikes. Who you got, Coley, and why? <laughs> the, I mean, the Cowboys may be the best, if not second best team in football right now. Hey, hey, watch your tongue, homeboy. They the second I, best. You said listen, not, oh, maybe. Not, I no said they're, they're in the conversation. They I think that's fair. They're in the conversation, they second. <laughs> Okay. Well, the Bills are not. They're, they're the eleventh best team in the AFC. Uh, so it's, I'm... It's, here's what I'm. Here's what I'm. Here's what I am interested to see in this game. One, they're winning football games, but they're, it's coming at a toll with Stephon Diggs. Yeah. How is Stephon Diggs going to play against a hot, 
fiery old dude. Used to be my neighbor, Stefan Gilmore. And, and Stefan is about that business. It ain't he about that action, boss. He doesn't say a lot, but if you get him chirping, he's going to chirp with you. And then yeah. Blaine is going to be on Diggs. I mean, uh, uh, on uh, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, yeah. That's going to be interesting. And then now, Dawkins, how's he going to get Lawrence or Michael Parsons? It's going to be a great football game. They're getting the ball to the running backs. James Cook is out there cooking. They used they used him more last week than they used him in two years. <laughs> You're not lying. Uh, they got Dawson Knox back too, who I do feel like Josh oh, I Allen. I'm, I forgot because I'm such infatuated with the University of Utah guy. <laughs> Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid. I got the Cowboys winning. Yeah, I'm not sure if the Bills' defense. I think the Bills' defense. I don't think they could keep it up, because if you take away some of the drops for the Kansas City Chiefs, which has been the case all all year, Kansas, City, like you said, Kansas City Chiefs mm-hmm. have lost four games because their wide receivers have dropped or made mistakes that resulted in taking points off the board, snatching it. I'm talking about snatch. You, Wig. I'm talking about t- taking a wig. <laughs> Such violent imagery. <laughs> oh. I know that ain't yours. Get, get over here. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to say what I'm saying, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the Cowboys by double digits. That's. Yeah. Okay. Who you got? Who you got? Who you got? Who you got? Who you give me, got? give me. We, we're, we, it's it's mid December, which means the NFL's taking the whole weekend now. We got Saturday. We got three games Saturday. That's going to be the rest of the year. I leave. I leave them all. I leave them all for LA, and I'm in LA till till that Sunday. Okay. Twice uh, back to back. I got I got Broncos Lions. This is. Yeah. Listen, Broncos are fighting for their playoff lives. Like you said, they're yeah, they the nine are. seed right now. The Steelers seem to be the key to this whole uh, playoff picture because, like you said, they play several of these teams the rest yeah, of the season. Yeah. Uh, so which Broncos lies, need – Which Jared Goff is going to show up, huh? Hey, that was the first thing I said in the group chat. <laughs> Brian Baltasheves. Which – Which – Jared Goff is going to show up. Is is it Jared Goff that got him uh, banished to Detroit from L.A.? (laughs) That man went, Detroit is like Alcatraz. He he went from sunshine to darkness. We put him on that Blake Griffin. Yeah. Broncos got rid of both their starting edge rushers and their defense has gotten substantially better since then. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Yeah. People owe Vance Joseph an apology. I never complained about the man. I can like, complain about other people. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not getting it. Cortland Sutton caught his 10th touchdown of the year last hey, Sunday. you see that one hand? Oh, that thing was smooth. That thing was dope. Mm-hmm. He looks all the way back. We talked about Pollard yeah. earlier. Sometimes it takes more than a, an off season to recover from a leg injury. I quit trying to figure it out. I have been Again, lost my hair trying to figure it out. Every week. It doesn't make it. Last night. Last night alone, the Dolphins were up 14 no! points. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, man, I watched that game. The pass that Will Levis tried to throw on the screen. Man, listen, if I – DeAndre Hopkins, I see why. Yeah, oh, yeah. If you, could, if you look at Will Levis, if you look at some of – the way he looks playing football, he looks <laughs> extremely nervous. Do they know I don't belong here? You think they know? Yeah, we do. And then he throws some dots, though. Like, it's it's very he play throws, to play. He throws some dots. He also throws some milk cartons. Hey, there's a, 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 a tall white with a strong arm like himself, there's a reason he didn't go in the first round, all right? The NFL lives to draft guys like that in the top five. There's a reason he fell to the second round. It's because every once in a while he'll throw a screen that has some popcorn vendor in the 30th row. That'll happen. That'll happen. I know. I heard some things in the draft that I will not say in, this proce- <laughs> in the process that I'm going. Mm. Hence why me and my daughter went to skin Aspen 
versus going to Will Levis's pro day. But, and then that game-winning drive, I mean, he's dinking and dunking, walking down the field. He hits DeAndre for a nice 30-yard gain. Like, it's it's very play-to-play play with Will Levis. You don't know very what you're going to get throw-to-throw. Throw. You want to pressure him, and he, he, that you pressure him, he'll, he'll fold like a napkin. Yeah. Sit back and let him read the coverages, but you got to pressure him. Talking about pressure, I was watching the Jets game. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. I believe Nathaniel Hackett has figured out how to win games with Zach Wilson. First of all, can you please explain this to me, how it is pouring rain outside <laughs> and dudes are in shotgun formation throwing a football as if they in Hawaii and it's 80 degrees, calm and collective. Run the football, man. That's why receiver saying that. What is going on? Crazy. How how so, depressed how, would you get on a Sunday? You showed up to the stadium and it was pouring buckets. Bro, I, several times I've said, well, there goes, there goes my day. Big cardio day for 89. I'm like, this sucks. All right. Well, I'm Steve Smith Sr. Coley Mick. With teleportation, this is Coley Mick with a fast metabolism. We out. I wish. Buddy. (laughs) He'd be scouting me for the next draft.